So welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to our virtual presentation. Uh, so we're going to talk to you about our Foreman Catello content view version browser uh, project that we spent the last year working on. Uh, so I'm Jason Kiesling. And I'm here with Evan O'Malley, Kevin Hong, Max Ryder, uh, and our advisor, Dr. James Daly. And we're all students in the UMass Lowell Department of Computer Science. Uh, so starting off this project, uh, we'd like to thank Red Hat, uh, specifically Ian Bailu and Heidi Dempsey, uh, who we've worked closely with uh, over the past year. Um, so we, the problem we were approached with, um, Kevin will talk about. Yeah, so the problem we were presented with at the start of this project was to create a web application that would improve the user experience found within the Catella plugin for the forum tool. Um, currently, the content views in Catello can become difficult to manage. As I'm sure if you used the forum tool before, when there are many of them, and for example, if it's, it's difficult to find a specific version, if there's a long list of versions, therefore it'd be difficult to edit quickly you can't find the specific version you want to change. And as you probably know, as forming users and can see from the slide, the versions are sorted by their version numbers and the environments aren't so sorted very well, but just listed in the current system. And it is currently not possible to follow the versions through specific lifecycle environment paths. If you wanted to actually see the lifecycle environment paths, you would have to go to this environment's page. But even on this environment's page, there isn't really much information on what content views are in which environment path. It just tells you which environment has how many content views inside of it. Uh, so this is where we came in. So we were tasked uh, by Ian to create a content view version browser. Uh, and this would allow real-world Foreman users to connect to a Foreman server and interact with data in an interactive display. Uh, so this data was supposed to be shown in a dashboard similar to Trello. Uh, so a user could log in, select their content view, and then see this dashboard with their content view versions. Uh, as Foreman servers can have a large amount of content views and content view versions, it needs to be highly performant so it could handle all of that data with very minimal latency. Uh, so we developed an open source web, web application utilizing React and Patternfly. Uh, throughout the process, uh, we also used the form and forms. Um, when we first started, uh, we, got, we asked for import from the community. Uh, for instance, we were asking about the name. Um, we had debates over how to, what to name the tool. Um, and what some users said was, it's easier to have a tool that is named what it does versus something like alligator, which you then have to figure out what in the world that means. Uh, we also used the tool, the forms to get support from subject matter experts. Uh, as this was our first introduction to Foreman, we didn't always necessarily know what the best way to do something was or whether or not something was possible or not. So we use the forms to get support from members who didn't have those answers. Uh, so now the new process, which I'll, Evan will show you in a second, uh, is that you log into our content view browser, you select your content view, and then you can see all those versions in that interactive Trello-like display. And then you can select a content view version to see more information about it. Right, so this is where we come in. Um, here's the login page for our tool. The really only, only real difference between this and the form and login is that you also have to add in what your server address is now. Uh, you can't use this to log into servers that don't have form and installed on them. Like if I wanted to go to google.com, right? And I'm, I'm the admin of google.com, obviously. Um, it will yell at you. It'll tell you that the host is inaccessible. Um, if you log into your actual server, with the wrong credentials, it'll tell you that you logged in with the wrong credentials. Um, it's gonna log in with the right credentials here. And Max is gonna tell you a little bit about this next page. All right, so here we have the, uh, that was an echo. Uh, we have the content view, uh, ver content view selection screen. 
Uh, so each of the cards that you see on the screen here represents a different content view uh, within our server. Um, and so uh, each, each card also has, uh, includes information that is relevant to the version or the view, I mean. Um, so we have the name for it, uh, what organization it belongs to, uh, the total number of versions currently in that view, uh, the current or most recent uh, version that was published, the number of repositories, uh, whether or not it's a composite view, uh, and finally, the most recent time that it was updated. Now, if you click on one of these cards, that will then take you to the content view version page where you can select different things for that. All right, and here we are at the content view version page. Uh, at the top, you can see again the name of this content view, uh, little, the description, uh, which organization it's from, uh, when it was created, uh, the last publish, and how many total versions there are in this content view. Now, the content view versions themselves are sorted between whether or not they have any lifecycle environment. Um, and if they do, the lifecycle environments themselves are sorted by the lifecycle paths. Now, the cards themselves, you can see have the version number, um, the description, and how many environments each uh, content view version can be found in. Uh, clicking on one of these cards opens up a nice modal, which has uh, the description of that content view version, uh, all of the content found within it. This one only has files, but you'll see later that it shows anything found within. And a promotion dropdown, um, which you can use to promote to any uh, lifecycle environment. Here you can see the one we clicked on is now found in production, and its environments are now two instead of one. I need to move real quick and we can just log out of the tool. Now remember before I said it shows all of the content found within that content view version before we only had files. You can see here it'll also show anything else that you could uh, feasibly put into a content view version. Anything at all. So uh, some features that we want to implement in the future for this uh, are the ability to compare two different versions, two different content view versions, uh, the ability to delete or edit a content view version, and finally the ability to uh, drag and drop a content view version to promote it instead of that drop down menu. Uh, so in summary, uh, over the past year, excuse me, we converted a difficult to understand user interface into an open source web application that is more easily understood. Uh, we also received help from the forming community by referring to their forums when we either didn't understand something or we wanted feedback on what we were doing. Um, now we'd just like to say uh, thank you for watching our presentation. Uh, thank you to Ian and the team at Red Hat for their support on this project. Uh, we would also like to say thank you to Professor Daly for his support and leadership during this project. Uh, at the bottom of the screen, you can see a link to our uh, project on GitHub. Um, and we will now take any questions. I assume you're communicating to the form and server via the V2 API or the REST API. That's correct. It looks really good. That's really cool. Um, is that, did that promotion actually kick off a, a task? Yep. Wow, nice. What was missing, what was missing from the API that would have made your life easier? Um, so, I mean, it, not necessarily, in, it's kind of API specific, um, but figuring out uh, cores was difficult. Um, at the end, I was trying to get it to support more than one domain on cores, and I only got it working with one domain at a time. Um, so this week I switched which domain that was, like 
27 times. Okay. Um, and then I know there, we had an issue with deletion. Uh, on Deletion got blocked because of cores. Um, for some reason, that cores header wasn't being set. Um, oh, sure. and then the other thing that we thought was interesting was it seems like there's not the ability to do an API, like get an API key to make calls with for authentication. Uh, so everything's being done with a basic authentication header. Okay. I know the command line. I think the command line has that. Okay. I could be wrong though. Um, when you're trying to understand the concepts presented within content views, what was the sort of the biggest challenge to just wrapping your head around what they did and how user, users interacted with them? Or was there a challenge there? Um, I think they were overall um, simple enough to understand. Um, I know one concept we didn't quite realize until the end was that you could have more than one lifecycle environment path. Uh, at first we thought it was just one and that, so that caused us to have some design shifts. What did you think they were going to say, Justin? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was just curious. Because I, I feel like we don't do a great job of explaining them, um, but I don't know how to do a better job. Um, so I was just curious for any impact or any feedback there. So uh, you said earlier you went out and chatted with the community. How did that go? Um, in terms of getting feedback, there wasn't a ton of it. Okay. In terms of getting support, um, that was definitely, there were people who, you know, we, we got the answers that we needed. Okay. And, and, I'm, and did time zone matter? I'm trying to think, you guys are students, so you were probably up later working <laughs> on this, likely last night. Uh, which, <laughs> Which means that uh, a lot of the folks, a lot, half of the support team was asleep at that point. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I mean, there wasn't, responses weren't immediate. Um, there was definitely a delay in back and forth. Okay. Um, which also, as you know, this isn't our full time job. So, there's, when we get a response, and then when we actually have time to check if that response fixes our problem, uh, is sometimes a day or two anyways. Okay. Okay. So Did you guys have a feature or um, an interface that you really liked that you had to get rid of? And if so, why? Um, not that I can think of. Oh, you're so efficient. <laughs> we, we were trying to play around with uh, pattern fly tool tips, but we couldn't really get them to work properly. Oh. Um, that would have been interesting to use, I think, but. Yeah, and that's also, it's not to say this is the first iteration of this design. We had other things. It's just, I don't know that any of us were particularly attached to them. Yeah. I mean, our first design was everything was in columns. Um, yeah. which part of, and then, so we switched from columns to rows. We, we switched from columns to rows because horizontal scrolling is not um, well supported. I guess is it, it's awkward and not natural. Um, so we switched to vertical. Uh, and then also once we switched to, or once we switched to those rows, then that was 
later on we realized that you could have more than one life cycle environment path. And so we had to shift that design to support our life cycle environment paths. So as you went through the project from start to finish, did you find that any of your requirements changed and how did you adapt to those? Evan, do you want to talk about comparing? Um, so part of, uh, part of uh, the project description here was we were uh, supposed to be, I, I don't remember if it was just a stretch goal or part of the actual project, but we were supposed to be able to, there was supposed to be a compare functionality between two versions. Um, we did not end up implementing that. Um, we, I don't, there was a, there were, there were complications, I, I imagine. Yeah, so the issue with that was there's no one call that um, we could have made to compare a version. Um, there were comparisons between types, but not, we couldn't just say I have version 12 and version 13, what's the difference? Um, so we didn't really want to make, you know, the 12 different API calls or however many to show the differences between every single type. Thanks. Was it pattern five four that you used? Yes. Yes. Nice. I'm curious if you used any of the pattern fly uh, react table components in your app and how was that experience? Um, not that I know of. I think we did. Yeah, there were definitely some of our things came, like there, there were definitely some issues with pattern fly documentation. Um, I mean, one issue was a lot of stuff that came up on Google was version three. So switching between version three documentation and version four documentation isn't like there's no just like switch between them you have to then find the you have to switch to version four and then refine the page you were looking for and sometimes we had issues with pages not actually being like the examples were on a different page than different documentation so switching between those was difficult So we actually get a lot of interns to work on pattern fly over the summer. So um, getting your feedback on things that you would like to see or to make it easier to use or things that you noticed that were wrong and need fixing, even things like documentation, it's totally worth the effort to pull that together because you could be saving lots of your fellow students future pain. <laughs> So that would be great if you have a chance just to drop uh, Ian or me an email about that and we can get it right to the pattern fly folks. Of course, you can do that too. <laughs> You're so yeah. open source, but I can nag them more easily. <laughs> so I have a question um, kind of more for my uh, Red Hat colleagues. Um, so I'm wondering about how we could kind of get their project out more into the Foreman community. Um, just a couple of thoughts I had. Um, one person had suggested that we could put this sort of this presentation video um, on the Foreman YouTube channel um, or perhaps um, do another uh, like deep dive type video, but this might kind of cover what would go in a deep dive. Um, so I'm wondering if, if that would be possible. And then also, um, I don't know if this would make sense, but if maybe having like a, like a foreman fork of their project or something, I know that some community, like community plugins end up getting, you know, switched from people's personal uh, GitHub accounts over to the foreman um, or uh, related organizations. But I don't know, just thinking of some ways we could kind of help promote it within the foreman community. 
I would definitely chat with Melanie, the new community manager about the first set. I think that's a great idea. And I would definitely add to that, not only the demo, but the, fee the feedback to the community around, hey, we didn't get feedback, I think would be a useful thing to say. Maybe find a polite way to say it, um, but you know that would actually be a great thing to do. Um, I think from a process point of view, I will, I will leave it up to the discussions for other folks here to talk about from a technical point of view, how do you get that in? I would look to Brad and Justin for that. Yeah, I would yeah, definitely even, uh, a blurb uh, on the community demos um, that we have every three weeks would probably be good. Yeah, I would, I would, I would definitely encourage it being, um, I think, a separate demo from from this particular one. That way, you can have an interactive, um, you know, interaction with the community and, and conversation, allow them to ask questions and and um, you know, those aspects. I think as far as uh, incorporating it into the upstream, I think it's, um, yeah, that that is a good time to actually, you know, go and talk to the community about it and see, you know, gauge level of interest, um, you know, see how they would like to see it adapt, see what kind of issues or challenges they've had. Uh, potentially using the capabilities um, of, of Catella that is, and uh, take it from there. Yeah, I think that sounds good. I will, um, I'll give, I'll get you guys um, the information for the next, or one of the next Foreman community demos, and we'll see if you guys could join, because if we can get this out into the community and have the members see it, um, it'll just be more likely for people to, you know, want to pick it up and try it out themselves. Um, also, I'd say the DevConf uh, US meeting that's coming up in September, um, they love to have student proposals for talks there. And uh, so if you were you know, interested in, in pursuing something like that, um, I think it would be great. I think it would have a good chance of getting accepted, especially with a Red Hat person associated with them. Um, it's a virtual conference this year. It's not in person. <laughs> Obvious so, reasons. <laughs> yeah, so you don't get to travel to sunny Framingham, which is where it was going to be, but um, it still would be cool to have you guys doing that. You know, that's a broader community, but it would be great to have UMass Lowell folks showing up in that community and talking about this, especially if you also included the, the pattern fly feedback, because that's you know, that's of interest to lots of other people as well. Yeah, I definitely second that notion of trying to get into DevConf if you guys are interested. Um, I can, if you want, I can help get you some more information on that. I'm definitely look into it. All right, guys, are there any other questions from the audience? That was it for me. It looks good. Thank you, guys. Thank All right, you. excellent. Yeah, thanks for the great presentation, guys. Thank you. Yeah, and um, if you guys can send me a copy of that, um, I'd like to have this to put on our, our Red Hat Research website. Um, so that would be great. Um, or the, the recording of the session, too, if you're OK with that, but at least the the presentation. Yeah, absolutely. Super. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all for the presentation and for taking on this opportunity. I, I, it's really cool to kind of, I, I got to see a little bit about the original description and it's really neat to actually see uh, the outcome of it. So thank you all. I appreciate it. Thank you for giving us this opportunity yeah. mm -hmm. and for coming and listening to us talk. <laughs> Are there any other questions? All right. Have no, I'm good. good. I'm everyone then. All right. All right. Thank y'all. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thanks, guys. See y'all.